You know, when I think about the west side of Chicago, the south side of Chicago, I think about the city, the thing why I have such a heart for youth is when I look at these young men in their early 20s, 21, 22, 23, and they're shooting each other up like it's the wild, wild west, you know what I think to myself? They were like eight years old playing football out front at one point. What, what happened from your childhood of being this little five-year-old kid, this little 12-year-old kid, to now you're 22 and now you're, you're shooting up people? This man here in this text, we don't know his story, but we do know at one point he was a teenager. And we're seeing now how far he's drifted. The thing that's important to notice here as well in this story is that the Bible doesn't even give him, an, it's not, it doesn't even tell us his name. It doesn't even say what his name is. It just says there was a man. He's only known by his situation. His name is his situation. He's the demon-possessed man. He's the guy who uh, is not around his family, who lives in the graveyard. He's the guy who's suicidal and cuts himself. You know, so often we only identify people by their situation. Not their name, not their person. Not the fact that they're created in the image of God. We, we often, we don't realize we do this so subtly as Christians where we just identify and classify people by who they vote for and by their pain and suffering. Oh, yeah, 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 I know that guy. Yeah, I heard about him. Yeah, he's a gang member. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know about her. Yeah, yeah, she had an abortion. Oh, yeah, 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 I know, yeah, I know him. Yeah, I heard about him. Yeah, he's, he's about an addiction. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know him. Yeah, he's, he's, he's bipolar. So often we, we address people and we categorize people based upon their pain and suffering and not the fact that they were created in the image of God. You know, when I tell people, they say, I travel around the country, they say, well, where are you from? I say, oh, I'm from, I'm from Chicago. Oh, which part? I say, oh, the west side. People automatically start apologizing to me. They're like, man, I'm so sorry. I'm like, for what? They're like, man, because what they see is on the news. They see the friction. Let me tell you what's happening in my neighborhood in Austin. Police officers serve as coaches for sports teams. Hundreds of churches and non-for-profit organizations partner together with thousands of kids on the west side to play basketball and, 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 and football and, and, and baseball and sports. Kids are getting tutored and mentored by the church, and none of it makes the news. So for me, in my neighborhood, don't apologize. But people apologize. It reminds me of Jesus when Nathaniel, when they said, we found the Messiah. And then, remember what they said to Nathaniel? They said, he's in Nazareth. And Nathaniel says, can anything good come out of there? I don't know about you, but I'm telling you, I am so thankful that my Savior comes from a neighborhood in which the first thing people said was, can anything good come out of there? That's my God. That's the God I serve. 